Hi, this is Dr. Bison E.M. Welcome to Excel Grades Academy. Today in embryology, we're going to look at the development of the limbs and the congenital anomalies of the limbs. Let's get into this video. So the limbs will start developing in the fourth week of development. Limb buds will become visible from the ventral lateral body wall. So these limb buds will have a mesenchymal core, which is made by the lateral somatic mesoderm, and it is covered by a layer of cuboidal ectoderm. Now, from this diagram, you can see You can see these are the limb buds here. And you can see these segments here. These segments are the somites, which develop from the paraaxial mesoderm. So this is the lateral portion of the development fetus. And the anterior part of the lateral part of the fetus is where the buds come from. This bud here is the lower limb. So this is a diagram of the embryo at five weeks. So the development of the limb starts when the somatic mesoderm layer of the body wall contributes mesoderm cells for the formation of the pelvic and the shoulder giddles and the long bones of the limbs. In most bones, Mesenchymal cells first give rise to hyaline cartilage models, which in turn turn into bone by ossification processes known as endochondral ossification. Now, here we're going to look at how the intraembryonic mesoderm is going to differentiate into the mesoderm that will give rise to our limbs. So the intraembryonic mesoderm is going to differentiate into three parts. The first one is called the paraaxial mesoderm. So the paraaxial mesoderm is going to differentiate on each side of the notochord. This is the notochord here that is labeled in this first diagram. And then you have the intermediate mesoderm. Diagram D here shows us very well. This is the intermediate mesoderm. The paraaxial mesoderm will divide into somites, which is shown here. This is a somite. And the somite is going to give rise to myotomes, which will give the muscles of the limbs, both the muscles of the upper limb and the lower limb. The lateral mesoderm is going to divide into the somatic mesoderm, which will give rise to the limbs and the splanchnic mesoderm. The splanchnic mesoderm will give muscles of the cardiac organ. So it will give rise to the cardiac muscles and to the smooth muscles. So now, let's differentiate between the somatic mesoderm and the splanchnic mesoderm of the mesoderm of the lateral mesoderm in the following diagrams. This diagram shows us very clearly that this here is the somatic mesoderm. The somatic mesoderm is found between the coelom, this is the coelom here, and the ectoderm, which is here. The splanchnic mesoderm is found between the coelom and the endoderm. This is the endoderm. So always remember, the somatic mesoderm is the one that will give rise to the upper and the lower limbs, while the splanchnic mesoderm will give rise to the cardiac muscles and the smooth muscles. This diagram is to emphasize the difference between the somatic mesoderm and the splanchnic mesoderm. So this is a coelom. The coelom is simply a space. All right. So now, what will happen for the lower limbs and the upper limbs to start developing 
are factors. They are growth factors. So the upper limb, for it to start burden or burden, there is a factor that is, is known as TBX5. The TBX5 is going to signal the development. So signal development of upper limb. Not just anywhere along the trunk, but between C5 to C8. And then TBX4 is going to signal the development of the lower limb. Not just anywhere, but between L3 to L5. So the upper limb buds are visible by day 26 or day 27. And the lower limb buds appear one or two days later after that. So you can see from here, from these diagrams that have been shown, this is the bud of the upper limb. And then this one here is the bud for the lower limb at day 32. At day 35, it elongates. What you need to know is that what promotes the elongation of the limbs is the apical ectodermal ridge that is found that covering the mesenchymal cells of the limbs. So at day 44, you can see that the upper limb here is even developing digits there. And the lower limb is, has also elongated. When it is day 56, you can see it has fully developed. It even has fingers like that. And then the lower limb has also developed toes like that. Okay. So in most bones, like long bones in the limbs, the condensed... All right. So the condensed ectoderm, the condensed mesoderm, which develops from the mesoderm, specifically the somatic mesoderm, and the neurocrest cells undergoes chondrification to form hyaline cartilage. And then the chondrification centers will appear in the fifth week, and by the end of the sixth week, the entire limb skeleton is cartilaginous. So you can see that this is a cartilage that has formed the scapula here, cartilage that has formed the humerus, cartilage that has formed the radius and the ulna, as well as the couple bones and the phalanges. This cartilage will then undergo endochondral ossification to form bones, and that is how the bones of the limbs are formed. This is a picture that is just showing you different developmental stages of the limb. So A are limb buds, and then B they developed into paddle-shaped hand and foot plates. C is where the digital rays, the fingers will begin to form. And then at D, the notches between the digit rays appear. E, there are webbed fingers and toes. And finally, there are separate digits. Okay. So while the external shape is being established, mesenchyme in the buds will begin to condense. And these cells differentiate into chondrocytes. So meaning the chondrocytes will develop from the mesenchyme that comes from the lateral somatic mesoderm. And by the sixth week of development, the first hyaline cartilage models foreshadowing the bones of the extremities are formed by these chondrocytes. Now, once the limbs are developed, they undergo what we call rotation. And the upper and the lower limbs rotate in opposite directions. So during the seventh week of gestation, these periods are very important. The limbs rotate in opposite direction. So the upper limb rotates 90 degrees laterally, and the lower limbs will rotate 90 degrees medially. Because the lower limbs rotates 90 degrees medially, it places the extensor muscles of the on the anterior surface and the big toe medially. So when you look at the extensor muscles of the lower limb, they are on the anterior surface. 
because they rotate medially. But the extensor muscles on the upper limb are on the posterior surface. Why? Because they rotate laterally. Okay, so this shows us the rotation. So you can see here, just follow this. You can see here that this limb here is rotating laterally. And this one will rotate medially. So the rotation of the limbs are very opposite. Now, this is a summary of the development of the limbs. So first of all, the mesenchyme from the somatic layer of the lateral mesoderm proliferates to form limb buds. And the apical ectodermal ridge stimulates proliferation and elongation of the limb buds. After the limb buds have proliferated, they change into cartilage. And then all the bones of the limbs will ossify by endochondral ossification except the clavicle. The clavicle will ossify by intramembranous ossification. One thing of note, the clavicle is the first bone in the body to start ossifying. And it's one of the last bones in the body to stop ossifying. The clavicle is one, is one of the most injured bones of the body because of its positioning. It is horizontal. So muscles of the limbs develop from the myotomes. And remember, myotomes come from somites, which come from the paraaxial mesoderm. Rotation of the limbs occur in opposite direction, where the upper limb is going to rotate 90 degrees laterally, and the lower limb is going to rotate 90 degrees medially. Development of the upper limb starts first compared to the lower limb, which starts one or two days later. Okay, that was a beautiful session. Now let's move on and look at limb defects. What are some of the anomalies that can form while limbs are developing? So limb malformations occur in approximately 6 per 10,000 live births. And the upper limb deformities are more common than the lower limb deformities, as you can see from that literature there. So uh, these defects are often associated with other birth defects involving the craniofacial, the cardiac, and the genital urinary systems. And these are some of the defects that we have. Amelia is where you have complete absence of one or more of the extremities. Melomelia is where you have partial absence of one or more of the extremities. Focomelia, sometimes uh, referred to as... Um, where the long bones are absent and then these rudimentary hands and feet are attached to the trunk by small irregularly shaped bones so that's what we call focomelia this diagram here is showing a condition that is called micromelia in this condition all segments of the extremities are present but they are abnormally short so if you can see dwarfs they have a condition that is called micromelia they appear like this. Brachydactyl is where you have shortened digits. So this is a condition that makes your fingers and your toes shorter than normal. But not necessarily that they are less functional. So you can see from this picture that the digits are very short. Syndactyl is where you have two or more fused fingers or toes. So in normal development, what happens is that the mesenchyme between prospective digits in the hand and in the foot plates are removed by cell death, which is commonly known as apoptosis. But in 1 per 2,000 births, this process fails, and the result is fusion between two or more digits. So if a child is born with fused digits, that condition is known as syndactyl. Polydactyl is the presence of extra fingers or toes. So the extra digits frequently lack proper muscle contractions. And abnormalities involving polydactyl are usually bilateral. As you can see in the picture, if you have it in the left hand, you also have it in the right hand. That is called polydactyl. Ectrodactyl is the absence of a digit. So you can see here that the index finger is missing. 
So it's supposed to have an index finger here, but it's missing. So that is known as ectrodactyl. And then we have got what we call the lobster claw deformity. So this consists of an abnormal cleft between the second and fourth metacarpal bones. What happens is that the third metacarpal and the third pharyngeal bones are absent. And the thumb and the index finger are fused. Also, the ring and the digit mini-me are fused. So you have got a lobster crow deformity. Your hands and your feet are going to look like a fork, like seen in the picture below. We have also what we call hand-foot genital syndrome. In this condition, the polydactyl or deformities of your limbs are accompanied by genital malformations. So you can have a polydactyl and a syndactyl, which is collectively known as syn polydactyl with genital malformations. Say your urethral orifice is not at the terminal end of the penis, but it is under the penis, which is called hypospadias. So when you have abnormalities both on your fingers and on your genitals caused by mutations in XOXA13, that is known as hand-foot genital syndrome. Last but not the least, we have got amniotic bands, which will result in ring contractions and amputations. Sometimes as the baby is developing, you will form bands around their fingers and they will be amputated like that so amputated there this is amputated 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 so these are some of the congenital anomalies that can arise when limbs are not well formed this is dr bison em you can join us for class at excellent grades academy at plus two six zero nine seven five four nine seven seven nine zero see you in the next video